Okay, awesome. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get started. It's Jeff Gibby here. Thanks for coming to a Metastock webinar. I uh, appreciate your coming in today. Um, let's go ahead and get underway. First things first, today's demonstration is designed to inform you of the Stuart McPhee Trade Launch System's official add-on. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell. It has guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software, the information software, and to techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Okay, we got that out of the way. Um, okay, today our, our guest is Stuart McPhee. We've been working on an add-on with Stuart uh, for some time now. Uh, Stuart, in case you don't know a lot about him, has done a lot of trading and a lot of training, uh, training people in Australia to trade. And uh, we package up basically his methodologies and put them in the Metastock software. Um, and um, I think you'll like it. It has some very, very unique functionality with it. So with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way and let Stuart kind of come in and talk to us a little bit about the uh, trade launch systems. Stuart? Well, uh, thank you, Jeff, for that introduction. Uh, a very good afternoon or evening or morning to you, wherever you are in the world. Um, Thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, for this session. Uh, my time is, I guess, limited a little bit today. I've been given, uh, you know, 45 minutes to maybe an hour to go through what I think is some reasonably important information. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Uh, if you haven't worked out already, within this Metastock seminar room, there is a chat window, and some of you have used that already. Please, uh, please feel free to use that at any time during the session. Um, I certainly warmly encourage uh, any comments, any questions along the way, and I'll do my very best uh, to respond to those questions uh, as we get going and as we go through uh, the session. So my session today, yes, I'll certainly talk about my add-on, which I'm very proud to have now uh, partnered with Metastock and made an official add-on uh, for their latest release, version 14. It's uh, been a long time in the making, and we've finally done that. But today I'm going to talk certainly less about that and a little bit more about in general how we do need to put a strategy together. And uh, we can talk all day about the importance of trading psychology and we can talk all day about the importance of managing risk and how that will make or break you as a trader. But having said all that, we still need a strategy that we can implement with some confidence and with some consistency that it can help us get into high probability trading opportunities. So we do all those other things well, but we still do need a robust strategy to give us some chance, of course, of uh, making some cash, which is generally speaking our primary motivation to doing all this. Um, we've already got a uh, picture of me, which was very kind of Jeff. That's what I look like. Um, very brief outline for today. I'll just very briefly talk about the importance of a plan, but I don't want to talk about things that are too obvious to people. I want to talk more specifically then about trading style and how we develop our own personal trading styles because theoretically there are so many different ways of trading um, and the important thing is we don't embrace all those and we don't look to trade uh, a variety of different ways. I think it's far more important for you as an individual to focus very specifically on a trading style that works for you and it may be very different to somebody else you know and how they trade but that's perfectly fine. We all need to discover an approach which is very much right for us. So I'll talk about my philosophy a little bit and then we'll talk more specifically and we'll go into Metastock and have a look at some charts and provide you some sort of uh, ideas about putting a strategy together. Well, this is a slide that I've certainly presented to a lot of people over the years and it's just to reinforce the importance of having a trading plan. I've been saying this for many, many years, uh, not only having a trading plan but one that is right for you and suits your personality and resonates with you and just makes a lot of sense and you feel very comfortable with. And uh, as I alluded to, it may be very different to the person you know next door who also trades. Your trading plans could be very, very different uh, from each other. And that's fine as long as you have something that works uh, for you. There's the three M's that I often talk about and I just sort of alluded to those earlier. You have the trading psychology or mindset your ability to manage risk and manage your money, and then of course the methodology or the strategy, uh, which is what I'll be talking about a little bit more uh, today. And if we break those three items down, 
And when we talk about specifically what our trading plan must have in it, I think this also provides people a little bit more focus and simplicity in putting a plan together. Now, at a bare minimum, your trading plan should answer these three questions, at a bare minimum. Um, but having said that, it doesn't need to necessarily answer much more than this. And I have uh, personally coached hundreds of people over the years, and I've certainly spoken to a lot more. And I'm still amazed at how many people struggle to put a plan together. Um, they've got an idea of what they want to do, but they don't put pen to paper and actually come up with something. But this is a starting point. Uh, at, a, at a sort of the bare level, this is what our plan should have. And I think sometimes if we break it down to this sort of level, um, it simplifies it and we don't become as daunted or overwhelmed with that whole idea of putting a plan together. So again, this is probably not new material for most of you. Under what conditions, you know, why will we enter a trade, long or short, right? Under what conditions will we do that? How much money do we put to that trade? How many units, lots, contracts, CFDs, shares, stock? whatever it might be, how much money do we commit and how much do we risk? And then of course, uh, how much, oh, sorry, under what circumstances do we get out? The interesting thing is if we extend these questions a bit further and come to a more important thing, and that is what's the priority? What's the most important decisions that we make? I would argue that in fact, question number three above is in fact by far the most important decision you make. But then it's not too far behind that your risk and how much you risk in that trade is also quite important as well. And then in a distant third, we realise that the circumstances that bring us to entering a trade are actually not perhaps as important as some other areas. And I think that's really important because if you show that to a beginner trader with no experience, they'll probably laugh at you. They'll, they'll just think that's nonsensical um, and doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But I think after a period of time, we start to appreciate that uh, getting out of the trades is far more important. So having that robust exit strategy, very clear uh, direction in our own plan of how we get out of trades is just, you know, it's uh, paramount. Um, and I'll, again, I'm probably not saying things of uh, much uh, new information to you on that. A few things about my philosophy and a few things that I really do firmly believe in, and these may fly in the face of some other things you've heard or other people's uh, beliefs that I very much believe in. Uh, some of these things. Now, a couple of things that are not even on this slide that I'll start with. Uh, one's obvious and one is not so obvious. Um, the obvious thing is you can't get every trade right. right? You've just got to very quickly accept the fact that, you know, having a strike rate or percentage of winning trades in the order of 60, 70, 80% is bordering on next to impossible. It's, uh, it's incredibly difficult and certainly not worth striving for for most of us. And even a strike rate of 50%, now that's not return, that's the percentage of our winning trades. Even 50% is really quite good. Um, and we need to almost readjust the way we think about things and think about being right and not right. Because whilst it's a topic for another day, but it's the expectancy and it's the average profit and average loss and reward to risk uh, relationship that is actually a key critical component of that rather than the strike rate. So not every trade right, but the other thing which is not so obvious is depending on your trading style, you may have extended periods of time where you are simply not trading. And I don't think that's as obvious to people. And I'm probably one of the few people that actually say that. Certainly brokers won't tell you that because they want you to trade all the time. But um, as a trader, you'll have periods of time, and again, this will vary on your style, where there's just simply no opportunities. And if you're trading currencies, that will be even more the case because you have such a finite, smaller group of uh, potential products or opportunities to trade. I mean, if you're trading stocks, then maybe not as much if you have quite a large uh, group of stocks that you look at, but you'll have periods of time when just nothing is happening. And if your trading plan is consistently telling you to stay out of the market, then it's doing so for a very good reason. And I think that's not as obvious uh, to some people. Now, before I go through this very quick list here, and then we move on to perhaps a few more practical things, um, again, just to call out, if you have any questions at any time, please do not hesitate to use the chat window and ask those, and I'll certainly see those pop up in my window, and I'll do my very best uh, to respond to those. So here's a few things that I firmly believe in. The first thing is trading is a process. It is a rules-based activity. 
In my mind, too many people trade indiscriminately. They trade randomly. They trade without process or without purpose and certainly without uh, methodology. Now, for the first time today, I'm just going to show um, Metastock and I'll certainly come back to this. Now, the first concession I'll make is that I'm using an older version of Metastock just for this particular uh, webinar. Um, so I'll just get that out uh, right from the start that I'm just using this one for the moment. But I've just brought up a stock that I'll come back and look at um, a little bit later in this uh, webinar today. Um, and this is a, a stock listed on the um, in the US uh, NYSE. Um, to me, too many, I talked about people trading randomly. What too many people in my eyes, and I could put up a chart here of the Euro US dollar or the yen or the pound or anything, but I'm using this particular stock as an example. Too many people will come to the right hand edge of this chart because we know that's where we trade, that's where we make the decision, and they'll look for an opportunity. They'll look for a reason to trade this. Now remember, they have no process, no methodology, no rules, no strategy. To, for, to many people, it is a random, indiscriminate way to trade. They'll look at this chart. Somebody may have told them about it. Whatever reason, they're looking at it. Now, they don't know what they're looking for, so they'll just continue to look. And it's almost in hope that something might pop out. So perhaps an, a level may become obvious. A pattern may become obvious. Uh, maybe we zoom in, we zoom out a little bit, and then we zoom back in a little bit. Perhaps we put a few lines on, we throw some Fibonacci, we throw some stochastic, we, we throw some things on the chart hoping that something becomes more obvious um, and gives us a reason to perhaps initiate a trade in this. And we can look at this for the next 10 minutes and still have got nowhere in our process and making a decision to trade this, whether it be long or short. And this is one stock amongst potentially hundreds. It's one currency potentially amongst 20. This is a very inefficient way to trade. Um, I do believe though a lot of people trade this way. And this is my whole, I guess, uh, lesson for today is, you know, sort of eliminating that from our process and developing a more, you know, structured set of rules, a more structured strategy, and, a, and, and certainly aiming for a level of consistency where we can very easily look at a chart and say, well, that, that doesn't, you know, that's not the way I trade. Therefore, let's move on to the next chart. And again, like so many things in trading, I think this is not obvious to you. Um, you've decided to be a technical analyst versus a fundamental and you know we need to look at charts and well sure enough you look at a chart and then well I don't know what I'm looking for but I hope something in the next few minutes really pops out and makes it very obvious what I should be doing because unless something like that happens I've got no idea and sadly I think too many people trade that way and I really do think it's a horrible way to trade it's very inefficient and generally has people going down the wrong path so I want people to start thinking about uh, trading very much being a process, a rules-based activity, and of course being process and system-based and rules-based, well, we're going to become more efficient. It's not going to take as long as we perhaps thought trading does take. I'll certainly talk about consistency today, and I talk about that all the time, um, about doing the same things over and over and over again, and I have a great example of that later on in this webinar. I also believe in less is more. Um, what I mean by that is I think actually trading less, uh, not actively always aggressively trading, um, but actually trading less and being a little bit more conservative is actually better for you in the long run. And I don't mean health, I mean just basic financial reasons, and that is your equity curve and account balance. I think people have a vision and an idea that trading is uh, exciting, it's exhilarating, but it's activity and it's, you know, constant and there's always things happening. And I look at, I log into my FX broker screen and I look at all the prices and all I see is red and green numbers flashing at me. And I think to myself, why are these numbers flashing? I know the rationale, I know, sorry, I know that if the price goes up, it flashes green and so forth, but what's the reason behind it? Why do I need to have these numbers Flashing, and I almost think that the only thing missing from that screen is the sound of bells, and that it should be almost a casino type environment. It's like the broker is trying to get me to act and to be impulsive and and do something because I'm looking at all these numbers flashing. Um, now that's my sort of theory on that. 
uh, haven't validated that or not, but that's my idea that but I think the opposite is better for us. We should be being a lot more selective um, in our opportunities and only demanding the highest quality signals, highest quality, highest probability. Not to the extreme case where we only look for the perfect signal because that rarely exists. Um, you don't get perfect signals, but just higher quality signals, just those with greater probability. And I, I do believe that trading more is not necessarily a good thing. It's not as if you are casting your net more often and you're more likely to make money because generally speaking, people uh, lose more often than they make uh, money, right? They actually have a strike rate less than 50%. So um, I do believe in less is more, being a lot more selective, higher quality, higher probability signals. I also believe in patience and that the best trades actually do take time. And if you're trading on daily charts and the chart I just showed you before, um, my medium term system, which is my altitude system, um, my best trades last well and truly beyond six months. And you know what? Best trades take time. Um, I've run a number of sort of experiments over the years where I do a scan using Metastock, of course, and I say, let's find out the rate of return of the top 50 or top 100 stocks or top 200 stocks over the last 12 months. And people are amazed that there'll be a few stocks in there that are like 200% or 150%. They're going, whoa, I didn't realize there were so many stocks achieving or moving so well in the last 12 months. And of course, before you know it, someone in the audience will put their hand up and say, how, how do you find, Stuart, sorry to interrupt, how do you find those stocks? How do you find those ones that move so far? Well, straight away, that's the wrong focus. It's the wrong question. And this person is definitely asking the wrong question, uh, certainly focusing on the wrong area. The reality is when you buy or sell, when you enter a trade, you have absolutely no idea where it's going. Zero idea. We have a sense and we think about probability, but we really don't know. And the right question to ask was, if I am lucky enough to have entered that trade right back at the beginning, if I was fortunate enough to be in that situation, how do I develop the right mindset? How do I develop the patience? What sort of exit strategy could I use to ensure that in 12 months time, I actually still was in that position? That's the right question. And that's the right focus. Um, patience is critical. Having a robust, solid uh, trailing sort of uh, methodology with your exits, which I do in my altitude system is paramount. It's so important. It's uh, You may be lucky enough to get into that stock, but everything else after that is so much more critical. And that is what you do and how you manage that trade and and how you allow it to move and come against you a little bit, but you have a good, you know, robust trailing stop methodology in place. And I'll perhaps just demonstrate that to you in uh, just a little while. I'll talk about this also a little bit, uh, although my time is very quickly running out. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't believe in using things in isolation. Uh, as, as an example, a doji candlestick pattern uh, is one of my favorite candlesticks. It's a great indication of a reversal signal, uh, a doji. In fact, I'm going to be fancy here and just uh, in the PowerPoint here, hopefully you can see this. That's a doji. Uh, basically, no range, uh, sorry, between open and close, but we have uh, a range between high and low and it basically ends up in the middle. That's a doji. It represents indecision. And when you see those after a good little short term up or downtrend, often prices reverse. It's a great signal. Um, it's a really effective uh, signal. But what I believe though is don't use things in isolation. You're not going to trade every single time you see a doji. Too many, too many times will you see a doji. And I want you to do uh, two things up, and that is only have higher quality signals. So what you'll do is use that doji because it's very effective, but you will combine it with other things. You'll combine it and measure the trend. You'll measure trend strength. You might look at volume. You might look at volatility. Um, uh, you might incorporate other things to complement that doji that you've I just, just identified. And I have been a huge open fan of Metastock. I've used Metastock since 1999. And this might be one of the greatest strengths in Metastock, which I'll certainly talk about in a second. And that is being able to incorporate all of these things that I just spoke about. And that is you can measure volatility, you can measure volume and comparative volume. You can measure trend strength. You can measure all these things, define rules, put them into an indicator or into the Explorer and have Metastock do all the work for you. Um, I, I cannot state that any more powerful. I just, it's just one of the most wonderful things about the piece of software 
that allows you to do all that and does all that work for you. Uh, a moving average crossover, um, as simple as that, that's a, that's a strategy. Every time a 10 and a 25 cross, that's a signal to enter long or short. That's a strategy. Um, now, it may not be the best strategy, and I wouldn't use it just in isolation. I would combine it with other things to improve that very simple setup, which leads me onto my last point before I really need to get cracking here, and that is I'm a firm believer in keeping things simple. I'm very proud of the fact that I have my book, Trading in a Nutshell, now in its fourth edition. Whenever I sign a copy of that book, I always write three words before my signature, and those three words are right there. Keep it simple. We have a tendency, humans, uh, subconscious, it's instinctive almost, um, to complicate things, and trading is no exception. We start trading, we lose money, we accept that trading is a little bit more difficult than we thought. Well, intuitively, we then think we need a complicated and complex solution to be successful, and I don't believe necessarily that's the case. Anyway, that's enough of my philosophy. I really need to move on here. Let's talk more about technicals and my rules and how we put these rules together. Technical analysis is an approach. It's not the approach. It's not a perfect approach. It's not the only one. Um, certainly, there's a lot of uh, people who use fundamental analysis. You can go outside and look at the stars if you want to. There's a whole number of ways in which you can look for opportunities. But I love the clarity of charts, and I love what it tells me. And I love that all the other things that people are thinking, whether I agree with it or not, are all incorporated into the price. I think price is the best indicator we have. Uh, the fact that we can apply our rules and we can monitor you know, price action and we can monitor patterns and we know why those patterns are occurring, I, it certainly gives me great confidence in being able to rely upon those and, um, you know, and to obviously make decisions. Um, <laughs> excuse me. I'm, right now, a couple of examples I'm watching right now, I'm watching gold. Gold's just finally broken through the 1240 level. It's been sitting there on support for the last few days and it's finally broken through to a one month low. Um, so that's something that I can monitor and sort of act upon. And right now I'm also looking at the Australian dollar versus the US and it's had a horrible time. But for the last week and a half, it's been sitting on support at 77 cents. And right now it's within reach of that and it's testing that level again. So I'm not doing anything fundamental there. I'm just looking at price. I'm sort of understanding that what people are thinking, they're looking at support and resistance. And if that support breaks, it's likely to become resistance. And I can use all that information to my advantage and hopefully develop some rules uh, to take advantage and look for high probability uh, opportunities. Or any form of analysis is designed to do the second last thing there and that is just simply increase probability of profitability. Increase probability, increase your chance of having a profitable trade. Um, I've taken this from Metastock but I did have a bit of fun doing it. I've done a lot of coaching and sometimes, not often, Sometimes I'll walk into someone's home and I'll say, right, let's go. How do you trade? Talk to me about your strategy because I need to dissect and hopefully improve you. And I'll bring up a chart like this. Well, what can I say? Um, there'll be so many things on their chart, and obviously I've had fun doing this. There's so many things on this chart. Um, <laughs> this to me is not trading. It's not technical analysis. It's playing with software. The fact that the software can do it for us doesn't mean we need to use it. Um, again, this to me is completely losing the, the whole idea and purpose of technical analysis. To me, uh, my charts are clear, there's very few things on them, and that's what I believe. I've talked about simplicity, I've talked about clarity, and what have you. So that to me is very little, has very little to do with um, technical analysis, is very much as playing with software. Just talk to, just going to whip through a few things here quite quickly, and I'm sorry about um, talking about my philosophy for as long as I didn't. Again, I welcome, uh, there is quite a few people in the session today, which I appreciate. And if you have any questions or any comments, I would love to hear them. If you would disagree with me, I certainly don't mind. You're welcome to put that in there as well. Um, and I'll certainly keep your name uh, between you and I. I won't have to mention your name when I repeat your question. Um, just about periodicity, uh, let me just go to Metastock just for a second. We'll go back to this uh, Boston Properties, and this is certainly not a recommendation to do something with this stock. Um, one, of the, one of the things I always do with uh, any time I look at a chart of a stock is I zoom all the way out. Now, I know as well as anybody, I can't trade anything in the middle of this chart. I can't ring up a broker and ask to do something back here. But what it does is it provides me perspective of the history of this stock. And then I begin a process of actually then just moving back in. But even just looking at this, I know 
um, that this is a level of significance. Hopefully you can see my mouse here. I'm referring to the high in early 2007, if you can't see my mouse. Uh, it's fallen off like so many stocks did, but it's regained all that lost ground and then some. So it is actually in uncharted territory. It's at blue sky territory. But then I actually then perhaps come back into a time period where it's consistent. I'm able to look at this chart with X number of periods in it, and then the next chart I look at will be exactly the same and the next and so forth. So zooming in too much is not good enough and zooming out too much is also uh, not good for us either. Um, we need to make a decisions with certainly a reasonable amount of information on the chart to make uh, a decision. So what I sort of say there is, you know, roughly a year or so on a daily chart, but of course that all changes if we change periodicity and we move down into intraday timeframes. Um, but one other thing that I, uh, have spoken about for a number of years and sort of got ideas from different people about this is, you know, we have Metastock, uh, the real-time version, which of course allows us to change periodicity. We don't have to rely on daily charts anymore. We can go down to smaller time frames, you know, go down to one hour chart or whatever it might be. But this poses a problem because rather probably in the olden days, and someone could correct me if I'm wrong here, but we're probably limited to just daily charts. That was the option. That's all we had. Um, well, that made the decision for us a lot easier because we didn't have any options when it came to periodicity uh, and the charts that we used. Um, well, nowadays we do have a bit more of a problem where whilst we have the options and we have the flexibility, we now have a decision we need to make and that is what is the right periodicity for me? Because what I don't believe in is looking at a uh, sort of a weekly chart and a daily chart and a one minute chart and a one hour and a three hour or four hour uh, and running through the entire menu of different trading or time frames or periodicities because I don't think that's a very good way to trade. The way you trade a one hourly chart is very different to the way you would look at a chart a weekly or five minute or what have you. So again, coming back to my main point of you must develop a strategy which is for you, not the other person, for you. And the periodicity and the type of charts you look at is a very big component of that. Because as I said, if you start to run the menu because you can, because the software allows you to, I don't think that's a good thing. You need to narrow your focus uh, a lot more. I've just uh, got this simple sort of uh, guidance here to people to help them uh, sort of narrow down their focus. And what I want people to think, and even those not trading or having a go, we have some sort of vision and some sort of idea of how our trading would look. We have an idea of what it looks like. So moving to the right-hand column, you can have some sort of idea of your typical average profitable trade duration. How long would a good trade for you last? Would it last minutes to hours, hours to days, days to weeks? Or in fact, you could add in there weeks to months. And by doing that, you can assign yourself a category. And then we perhaps, with that category, we can then perhaps narrow down our focus a little bit more with periodicity, which best complements and sort of supports that sort of uh, trading style. And again, I could add in here medium term, we could make that daily or weekly charts. But what it does is narrows down our focus. Someone trading, you know, really short term time frames, just in trades for literally minutes, maybe an hour at most, there's probably very little use to look at a daily or weekly chart. It just doesn't complement them. It doesn't do anything for them. Whereas I always look at a daily chart, but that's fine because my trading style is different to that person. So periodicity to me is a very important part of, um, you know, identifying our style. What I'm going to do is I want to get off the PowerPoint just for a little bit and just perhaps talk a little bit more practical because unfortunately I'm running out of time uh, a little bit. Now, if I just look back over the last few months uh, and you're going to see some components here of my altitude uh, system which is part of the official add-on um, but clearly this stock and this has come up as one of my scans is in a very strong medium term uptrend it's currently forming a bit of a symmetrical triangle uh, I could draw those in if you really wanted me to not that I'm a uh, my altitude system doesn't incorporate uh, triangles but it's sort of interesting to know that's a symmetrical triangle where both angles are reasonably equal but it's certainly in a very solid uh, medium term uptrend. Now, um, altitude, my altitude system has obviously brought this up and it's brought it up, I think, for the last little while. And that's why I've just simply presented it today. But I want to talk about different trading styles because some people 
and this is what my ignition system does, by the way, which is a shorter term system. Um, the ignition system will take this as a trading opportunity and then probably get out after a couple of days. And it may have taken this as an opportunity and it probably would have taken this as well and then got out after a couple of days. Sorry, and I should add in this as well. Now, a couple of things about strategy and give you some ideas. Potentially, I could have drawn in other lines. I could have drawn in a line here, here, here and perhaps a little bit here. So those four downward facing lines compared to the four upward ones. Now what I really should do quickly is remove those because I don't want to confuse you. My ignition system, whilst it trades short term trends, only does so in alignment with the longer term trend. And to me it's simple maths, it's simple probability and it's just higher quality signals. For example, when you have a strong medium term uptrend and that's what that trend ribbon down the bottom is displaying, when we have a strong medium term uptrend, the short term moves within that uptrend, well the short term uptrends are simply going to go further and longer than the short term downtrends. Mathematically, because the price was here, it's now up here, mathematically that has to be the case. So what I suggest to people is trade the short term trends in alignment with the longer term trends because you simply have more opportunity for profit it you know it it's, uh, gives you a little bit more time, um, just goes further, and to me trading this is a just far worse opportunity, far worse. Taking this short term downtrend against the overall trend is far worse. It's an opportunity. You could have shorted that, um, but it wouldn't have gone far. It wouldn't have gone for very long, and it would have been perhaps a break even trade at best. Well, we want to sort of eliminate the poorer quality signals. And what I do with Ignition is look at the longer term trend and try to identify the short term uptrends in alignment with the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in alignment with the uh, medium term uh, uptrend as well. Now, with all of that aside, what the medium term system does, which is altitude, is identifies this, you know, when it achieves a new high and it's been established for a little while, and I'll be perfectly open with you, altitude system would not have identified this down here, absolutely guaranteed, would not have identified it in the low in September, October, it wouldn't have, even this break here to the high in November, it would not have identified it. It would have identified it somewhere in December. Um, now, of course, what we see in December is if I just zoom back, is very similar to what we see now. It's at an all-time high, it's moving well, and it's very easy to think, oh, well, perhaps I've missed it and maybe I can't get in anymore. And of course, you know, things like this just continue to move. But the key in being able to stay in an established uptrend or downtrend, uptrend, and allowing price to, you know, just retreat a little bit and sort of just have a little bit of an easing off, that's the important agreed. I'll just choose a date here of 17th of the 12th. Um, so this, what I mentioned before about having a key um, system regarding, you know, exits and being able to being able to take advantage of those medium term uptrends is something like this, where we just have a very simple trailing methodology uh, where we allow stocks room to move. We don't say, oh, that went down one day, that's no good. Um, we allowed every opportunity to keep going. Um, this to me is a very solid example of a trailing stop methodology. Obviously, it's part of the altitude system. I've been using this stop since 2001. Uh, I'm quite proud to admit, not ashamed at all. Um, been using this, it's exactly the same methodology. A few years ago, I actually widened it just a little bit, but it's exactly the same uh, principle. And this does a fantastic job of allowing stocks to move, allowing them to come back a little bit against the trend but allowing them every opportunity to continue. So when I mentioned earlier about you know, someone asking, oh, how do you find them? Well, you don't find them. But if you are lucky to find them, you need to have a good exit system in place that you cannot argue with. I have three beautiful children. None of them have any idea about trading, but all of them could tell me whether the price has remained above that yellow line or is in fact broken down and closed below that. They could all tell me that. That's how simple this very critical decision is for me. That's how simple it is. Um, and when we come to monitoring our trades and just checking them, it's right, has that closed below the yellow line? No, no further action. Next chart. That's it. That's assessing my open positions. So it's really important and obviously that's a very 
critical component of my altitude system. No good me giving you the scans and telling you how to find good established uptrends if I didn't give you a robust methodology of being able to get out of them. Um, the other thing I love about consistency, sorry, and I'll just quickly, again, time is escaping me. And again, this is by no means any recommendation to buy or sell and excuse the old uh, console. Again, I uh, mentioned that earlier. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this is one of the absolute things I love about Metastock, and I sort of hinted at this earlier. And this is, of course, what systems are all about and aiming for consistency. And again, this is certainly no recommendation to buy any of these. But I did just did a scan on, you know, the S&P 500 constituents uh, yesterday, I think I did, and it pulls up this list. And of course, I have all my uh, parameters uh, that I will rank them by. No good being in alphabetical order. Um, that's a great starting point, but we can do a little bit better than that. And I rank them based on uh, criterion that are important to me. And certainly this volume strength and uh, the bracket is very important to me. Um, so we do that and we can sort them all. And all of a sudden, rather than me looking through 500 charts, which I used to do and still can't believe I did, but I didn't know any better, and I thought that's what traders do, to now coming into Metastock, opening the Explorer, running a scan, give it a minute or two, and it's done unbelievable amount of work for you, and you now come up with a very short list. This to me is the greatest part of consistency, is only looking for opportunities that are meet your criterion. And the great thing is, uh, and in fact, I'm surprised, obviously, you know, we do know the US markets are doing incredibly well. So this is actually quite a large list compared to normal. And we want this list to be quite small. Um, we want to not have many charts at all to go through. We want only those that have met our criterion. This to me is a unbelievable tool in aiming for consistency, is having a scan which mathematically says yes or no. And it's not, oh, I'd almost met that rule at all. No, 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 Metastock doesn't care. It says, no, you didn't meet that criterion. You're in the filtered out list, in the rejects. You're now uh, not good enough. That's terrific. That's great for us. It does all the uh, number crunching for you. So we're able to now rank these and perhaps go through them in order uh, in accordance with what's important to us and the parameters that are important. And of course, all of this is all part of my altitude system. You can even see there in the an old title there, uh, which of course is all in the add-on and all in the uh, manual, all of these things explained. But that's just a terrific way of aiming for consistency. But I want to talk about, again, just quickly, you know, developing a strategy, we need to work out something that works for us and then stick to that. I think that's the important thing. Um, and if someone says to you, oh, I like the look of, uh, you know, ABC stock, it's doing this or it's doing this, I want you to get to the point where you don't care. Uh, that, that's just not what you do. You don't look for those opportunities anymore. You don't trade randomly and look for different things. You just look for those things that meet your criterion. And um, even with my add-on, you know, there's obviously I just don't have one rule in there. There's quite a few things. And again, that's a great thing about Metastock, being able to throw in so many different criterion and indicators into the into the filter of the Explorer and have it uh, go and do all the number crunching and all the calculations. Even then, we throw in a lot of different uh, parameters and conditions to only ensure those things that meet our criterion um, you know, are met and actually displayed uh, to us. So that's really, really critical. Um, just had, I hadn't, haven't had any questions today, which uh, I'm a bit surprised about. Hopefully, you're all uh, uh, sitting there perhaps a little bit, uh, I don't know, bewildered or something or not quite sure, or maybe this is all new material. I certainly hope it's not all new material. Maybe it's a little bit different to what you've heard in the past. Um, we definitely can't trade in hindsight, as someone has perhaps hinted at. But the great thing is, um, it's a great way of testing and coming up with rules. And the next slide in my presentation is very much about this. And going back over history and trying to confirm and validate or prove or disprove whether a set of rules work. And when we see them work over time, it gives us just that little bit of confidence that maybe we can start trading with those rules from now on with real money. Um, Excuse me, but um, it gives you confidence a little bit. And I can assure you, and I've done this before, I've been in this, exactly the same position. It is really tough to get confidence initially. When you don't know what you're doing, you're in an isolation, very solitary environment uh, as a trader. Uh, it's really tough to get confidence. And that's a topic for another day and how we can work on all that. But certainly coming up with a set of rules and validating or proving or disproving um, does help with confidence and gives us a bit more 
um, hope and things are going to happen and and uh, work for us. Um, <clears throat> someone just said recently read the book. I'm assuming he's referring to mine, uh, which is very kind. Thank you. So I've just read all this. Oh, good to hear it again, though. Well, that's good that I'm saying the same things, I guess, that I wrote in my book. Thank you for that. Um, something else says everything is very good so far. Keep moving forward. Thank you. I appreciate those kind words. I'll do my best uh, to get in a few more things. Uh, before we finish up, because uh, certainly time is running against me. This is the process I probably just hinted at a little bit then. Um, the interesting thing is, let me just go back. Um, about, you still want to validate, I guess. You still want to look at rules. And I'm going to be very open with you here. I'm incredibly proud of my add-on for Metasoc, because there's two very distinct trading systems, the altitude and ignition, not even including then the reversal signals, which I've also developed. But um, I'll be very open with you. And that is, I would still think that people who purchase the add-on um, as part of this launch and have done that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they're still going to want to prove it a little bit to themselves. I wouldn't expect too many people to go and blindly trade my system without having a bit of a look at it and a bit of validation themselves. I would like to think people would respect their money too much to take that risk. That's, again, I'm just being very open with you and that's my perspective. But it's an unbelievably great starting point. Uh, because here's a set of rules, um, and we do test it, and we do, you know, do the scan, and we follow it for a week, or we follow it for a month, and see how it works, and that gives us confidence. And all of a sudden, we've bypassed a number of steps in developing a strategy, and we've got something that works, and that can give us a lot of confidence early on. And then maybe we tweak it, maybe we add something else in. Well, obviously, you're right to do that. So, um, but it's a great starting point. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so this is sort of the process I've spoken about. We, we try to look at price. We try to identify what's working and what doesn't working, make some observations. Let me just go back to here. I mentioned the doji candlestick. I'm putting myself on the spot here trying to find one. I mean, this is a, um, now that I think about it, I'm disappointed that I don't have my reversals template here because the third system, which I've hardly mentioned today, is identifying reversals. And that is a, those two red candles at the top there are a textbook uh, reversal as a, these two here, and as a, that's a Harami just here. So there's quite a number of reversals here. So the idea being that we need to look at price and try to make observations of how we could trade and how we could, you know, how could we have traded short there? How could we have got in right there and, and taken advantage of that? And this is to me is the process of developing rules and, and then going to prove what works and what doesn't work. And I did this. And I did it with Metastock. I remember using the system tester. I still visualize sitting next to a, a friend's pool in 2000, all of a sudden a long time ago, using the system tester and just running through optimization variables and going, I was just having a ball doing all this. And I thought, you know, I'd be able to work it out very quickly having uh, done that. But it really was a process of working out what works and, uh, and what doesn't work. I just need to whip through this a little bit quickly. And my apologies, Jeff, that um, I'm perhaps running out a bit of time here because I wouldn't mind... There's been a few comments uh, there, and I appreciate those. If there's any final questions, perhaps get those in, and I'll do my very best uh, to answer those in the time I have remaining. I mentioned this a little bit. I, I'm not a big fan of using things in isolation. You can trade a doji. Every time you see a doji, you can trade it. Every time a moving average crosses over with another one, you could trade that, but it's not the best way to do it, I don't think. Um, I think you need to incorporate other things, and I've got things here like I'm a huge trend follower. My altitude and ignition systems are all trend-based. Uh, I'm not saying trading with trend is the only way to trade, but I think it's a very, let me say, it's probably a less difficult way to trade than some other methodology. So I love trends, and I'm a very big uh, trend follower, and certainly my systems are very much based on that. But we can incorporate a trend component in that doji signal or in that moving average crossover signal. We can incorporate something else. Um, we can incorporate candlestick patterns. Well, I've just mentioned the doji. We can incorporate chart patterns. We can incorporate key levels like support and resistance. No good getting a classic reversal signal to go short and the biggest support level in the history of this particular stock or currency is sitting right there, you know, 15 pips below. Um, so, yes, we could have traded that signal, but it's not the best signal because we're looking at the bigger picture and we're looking at other things like key levels and support and resistance uh, and the like. And I think we can do that. We can improve. Um, we can improve rules and we can improve signals by, um, <clears throat> excuse me, by incorporating other things that sort of complement uh, the rules we put together. Um, 
I'll just finish off with uh, a few quotes, uh, if I may. I'm a big one with uh, quotes. I use them all the time in my presentations. Um, this is from one of the market wizards, not in the original Jack Schwager book, but one of the others. And this is an obvious thing to say, but uh, it's sort of what I'm getting at today. You need to determine why the winners are winners and the losers are losers. Once you can figure that out, you can become more selective in your trading. That's the key. You can become more selective. Only demand the highest quality signals. Not perfect. They really exist. The highest quality. Don't trade everything that pops up. Just because my Metastock scan before showed 50 stocks, there is no way in the world I'm going to trade all of those. Even in that list, there are some poor signals because I wasn't able to incorporate something within, you know, there's always something there. Um, I just want the highest quality signals. Once you can do that, you can become more selective in your trading and avoid those trades that are more likely have the higher probability to be losing trades. This is my process and I talk to people about this all the time. Trading is a process. It is a rules-based activity. Um, I, I couldn't picture myself looking at a screen for 10 hours a day watching numbers flash green and red. I just couldn't picture myself doing that. People do it. I just could not do it. Um, we need to become very efficient and we need to become very routine and do the same things over and over and over again. Um, process to me is everything when it comes to trading. There's my process. I don't need to read through it. You've had time now to just have a quick scan through. But the great thing that Metastock does is it allows us to go through steps two, three, and four, and that is to do all that number crunching. Go through thousands of stocks, 500 stocks, um, and just say, here you go, Stuart, here's the four that met your uh, rules. I'm going, that is fantastic. There's 496 charts I don't have to look through. Um, and again, I think I've made my stance on that quite clear. I just think it's a terrific tool um, to be able to do all that number crunching. Have your rules in the first place and then look for opportunities based on those rules. And then we go through the risk management uh, side of things and go ahead and, and execute and move on and do something else. I'll just finish off with a few more quotes. Um, his, uh, you may know this name from the Turtles, um, Richard Dennis, his mate. The desire to maximize the number of winning trades or minimize the number of losing actually works against you. The success rate or the strike rate that I mentioned earlier is the least important performance statistic and may be in, may even be inversely related to performance. So don't necessarily strive for high strike rate. Um, I'll just flick through because time is against me. I love this one from Ed Sakoda. This is from the original Market Wizards book. He's a trend trader. Um, but he, but notice he's got components. You'll see the numbers there. One, two, three. He's not trading things in isolation. He's trading components and different things. The long-term trend, the current chart pattern, and picking a good spot to buy or sell. And you can read the rest. They're the three components. I don't trade every single time a moving average crosses with another. I don't trade every single time we have a six-month high. I don't trade every time that something breaks through the resistance level. We can do better than that, uh, and I think that's the important thing. Just to finish off here, I guess the perspective here is that we're talking all about entry and developing a strategy, but there's more important things to it, uh, and that is the managing risk and the psychology and the six inches in between your ears, of course. But the we do need to have a strategy. We do need to think about consistency and entering high probability, high quality signals. I do believe in patterns. Um, I, because patterns occur all the time, whether it be triangles or you know flags and pennants and wedges and all those sorts of things, it's all very repeatable. Um, and we want rules that are repeatable. Someone said to me the other day, I think price of gold or oil will go to this because this is going to happen in this country. And he may be absolutely correct, but how repeatable might that rule be? Um, I think we can do better as technical analysts to have very number-based uh, data-driven rules and data-driven decisions. And that's the beauty of Metastock, being able to incorporate all that into our tools and into the explorers and the indicators and the like. I'm a big believer in keep it simple. And I also very firmly believe in identifying a time frame which is appropriate to you and not somebody else. And very much narrowing your focus down. Just to finish off and talking about gambling a little bit, um, just on the consistency standpoint, um, these, uh, the organizations that have tables like this just don't lose money. And we need to be different and we need to be better than the person who just walks in, wants to have a bit of fun and throws some money on the table and walks out poorer 
than what they walked in. But this particular table, all the odds make sense. Uh, if you pick red or black, you know, it's two to one. If you pick one of the thirds or whatever, all the odds mathematically just make sense. It seems like it's a fairly fair and reasonable game. But of course, what we do have on a lot of these tables, and in some cases, two of them, we have a zero at the end. And that zero is, of course, the edge. It's all the casino needs to clean up on this table. Every time that white ball is thrown onto that spinning wheel, they don't make money. Not every time, definitely not. But at the end of the day, do you think they make money? Absolutely they do. We need to think in the same way. We need to think in the same way of consistency and probability. We put rules that work in our favor and we apply those rules with unbelievable consistency. And as long as we manage risk well, good reward to risk, we stick to the rules, we allow trends to keep going and all those sorts of things, as long as we do all those things well, but we give ourselves a very good chance at the beginning by being very consistent and demanding the highest quality signals with high probability, then you know what? Good things may happen. And that's what we need to do as traders. We need to do this well. Um, and I'm the first to admit, and I was going to say this in my opening sentence, but I didn't want people logging out and not listening to me anymore. I don't believe trading is very easy at all. Trading, I'm very open and I'm very... I say it very often, I actually think trading is quite difficult. Um, it's just not that easy. And I think when people tell you that it is and you'll pick it up in no time, I think very much they are doing you a disservice because it's just not that easy at all. All right, unfortunately, I need to finish off here. If you don't mind, I've just quoted myself from my book. Someone mentioned my book earlier, which is uh, thank you for that. And here's a quote from my book. Commit to mastering one trading setup and then executing it with great discipline and consistency. I thought in the line of quotes, I would just uh, mention that as well. Just quickly, I know Jeff might uh, spend a minute or two doing this as well. Um, someone, a few people have mentioned comments about perhaps mentioning a little bit more about my systems uh, today and the add-on. Uh, my apologies for doing that. I very much wanted to talk uh, generically about the pro, you know, putting a strategy together and using that strategy and the sort of things that strategy uh, should have. There is certainly a video on the Metastock YouTube channel where I uh, talk a little bit more specifically about um, the trade launch systems and about altitude and ignition. So you're welcome to go and uh, browse for that on the Metastock YouTube channel and look for that. My trade launch systems does include two primary uh, primary trading systems, and that is the altitude and ignition, uh, things that I've been working on for many, many years. They are distinct. They're both trend following, but they're certainly different time frames. And you just you know, are in the position of being able to choose one that just works uh, for you. Um, I should tell you again, just to be very open to you, I have used the altitude system on stocks for a long time, um, whereas I use the ignition system more for currencies and maybe gold occasionally. So there's just different products that I'll trade in slightly different ways, but they're all trend following and you wouldn't believe it. I always cut losses and <laughs> do all those uh, time tested principles that I think are of course important. There's also the reversal signals in there, uh, which also has its own uh, expert advisor and template and you can apply that and look for uh, those reversal signals just like those couple that I uh, mentioned um, today. Well I think that's it. Um, ladies and gentlemen uh, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate you joining me and taking an hour out of your schedule to listen to me. I hope that's been of some use to you and provided you some food for thought. Um, I appreciate your contributions. I'll have a a uh, quick look through the questions now and perhaps have a think about some answers and maybe get them through to you somehow. But it's probably my time now to turn back over again. Uh, a big thanks from me. I appreciate your time today and I hope uh, I hope that's been of some help to you and uh, I wish you all the best with your trading. Thanks very much for your time. Jeff. Thank you, Stuart. I'm going to, um, let's go ahead and just kind of go through the pricing real quick and how you can get this add on. Thanks, Stuart. That was a great class. Uh, really appreciate your time. I know it's kind of prime time over there in Australia uh, for getting work done, so I really appreciate you spending some time this morning with us. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of this, indicators that were included, there's a huge amount of indicators, but more importantly, as Stuart was saying, is he's giving you a few systems, and you need to focus on how to figure out which one to work that's going to work well for you. Uh, I really like what they did. I, I came in kind of towards the end of the development cycle on this, but... I have to say that one of the things that I really like about this add-on is it will tell you, based on how much money you want to be trading, how much you should be trading and where your stop losses should be and all that kind of stuff. It's a very, very 
thoroughly designed add-on and uh, very, very unique. Obviously, this is the showcase and the feature of the add-on uh, with the upgrade. And if you want to buy it, it's $3.99. It does require Metastock 14 or higher to run. Uh, and if you do it with your upgrade to 14, it's going to uh, be $2.99 if you do it then. To take advantage of that, you can give us a call. The phone number is 800-882-3040. If you have questions, give us, drop us an email at sales at metastock.com. And I want to say, again, thanks for coming in. Thanks for spending an hour of your day with us. And let us know if there's anything that we can help you with. And Stuart, thanks again for all the time that I know you put into kind of developing the add-on. And we really appreciate uh, the support of Metastock over the years. Uh, um, okay. That's it for me. Uh, I'll see you at the next webinar.